Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the Commanding General, Brigadier General Milford H. Beagle, and the Post Command Sergeant Major, Command Sergeant Major Jeremiah Gann, welcome to the United States Army Training Center and Fort Jackson for the graduations of Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, and Delta Companies from the 1st Battalion, 34th Infantry Regiment, 165th Infantry Brigade. Please stand for the invocation given by Chaplain Deborah Frick. Please join me in prayer in your face. Almighty God, today is a special day, a time of recognition of hard work and completion. I'm very thankful for all that you have through. You have taught this young man and woman in their time of learning and growing. Thank you for the strength and determination you gave to each person to make it through to the end. We acknowledge their courage to follow their vision and see it to completion. To all who will step up and be recognized today, I ask that you give them a sense of fulfillment in their accomplishment. Also, remind them that they didn't do it alone, for they were a team and many helped along their difficult journey, and to extend their thanks to those who were there for them. In addition, remind each of your interest in their future success and that they are never alone in their journeys, for you are faithful with them, with your power and guidance. In your holy name, I pray, amen. Please be seated. The purpose of today's ceremony is to recognize the commitment of the men and women you see standing in formation before you today. They have volunteered to serve their country as soldiers. This review is the last official formation of the training cycle. Not everyone successfully completes this difficult period of training, but those in formation today represent disciplined, motivated, physically fit soldiers who exemplify the seven army values, loyalty, duty, respect, selfless service, honor, integrity, and personal courage. They are imbued with the warrior ethos and display the tenets of putting the mission first, never accepting defeat, never quitting, and never leaving behind a fallen comrade. This is an important day, and they can take great pride in their accomplishments. To the parents, families, and friends of these soldiers, Fort Jackson extends a warm and sincere welcome. We are justifiably proud of them and are equally honored that they have chosen to join our ranks. Please direct your attention to the left of the formation. The units marching today from left to right are the 282nd Army Band under the command of Chief Warrant Officer 3, George T. Bauer, graduating soldiers from Alpha and Bravo Company, the Battalion Color Guard, and graduating soldiers from Charlie and Delta Company. Identified by their distinctive headgear are the drill sergeants. These dedicated non-commissioned officers form the backbone of the Army's training center system. Selected on the basis of professional competence, leadership, and years of service, these men and women undergo intensive training during the right to wear their distinctive hat and insignia. With the drill sergeant hat, it was the important responsibility of all the civilian men and women in the soldiers. The commander of troops for today's ceremony is Major Dwayne M. Terry, who serves as the executive officer for the 1st Battalion, 34th Infantry Regiment. Major Terry and the battalion staff are positioned on the field. The reviewing officer for today's graduation is the commander of the 1st Battalion, 34th Infantry Regiment, Lieutenant Colonel Andrew D. Staples from Bowling Green, Virginia. On his left is Command Sergeant Major Andrew Bullock from San Diego, California. The senior non-commissioned officer, master trainer, and principal advisor to the commander. and persons to be honored. Competence and commitment are the hallmarks of professional 
Astros. The soldiers and drill sergeants coming forward will be recognized for their excellence in training and duty performance and serve as examples to all. Ladies and gentlemen, it is appropriate for soldiers not in uniform and all armed force veterans to salute the American flag. We ask that all others please remove your headgear and place your right hand over your heart as our national anthem is played. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Lieutenant Colonel Staples and Command Sergeant Major Bullock will now present the awards. The outstanding drill sergeant of the cycle from Alpha Company is drill sergeant Roxana McCauley from New Orleans, Louisiana. The soldier leader of the cycle from Alpha Company is specialist Dominico Bowen from Clarksville, Tennessee. The soldier cycle from Alpha Company is specialist Cassandra Kern from Washington, Missouri. The outstanding drill sergeant of the cycle from Bravo Company is drill sergeant Allison Gardner from Charleston, West Virginia. The soldier of the cycle from Bravo Company is specialist Caitlin Brewington from Sheboygan, Wisconsin. The soldier leader of the cycle from Bravo Company is specialist Braden Youngkin from Savannah, Missouri. The outstanding drill sergeant of the cycle from Charlie Company is drill sergeant William Schmidt from Williamston, Michigan. The soldier leader of the cycle from Charlie Company is Private Tatiana Evans from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. The soldier of the cycle from Charlie Company is specialist Mary Sarsfield from Fairmont, West Virginia. The outstanding drill sergeant of the cycle from Delta Company is drill sergeant Jessica Rivera from New Bedford, Massachusetts. The soldier leader of the cycle from Delta Company is Private Mason Potter from Graham, Washington. And the soldier of the cycle from Delta Company is specialist David Forney from Golden, Colorado.
Ladies and gentlemen, the commander of the 1st Battalion, 34th Infantry Regiment, Lieutenant Colonel Andrew Staples. Good morning, everybody. General Lundy, sir. General Beagle, Mrs. Beagle, Sergeant Major Gann. Uh, fellow Army leaders, our veterans, and the friends and families of the graduating soldiers of the 1st Battalion, 34th Infantry Regiment, welcome to Fort Jackson, and thank you for attending today's graduation ceremony. This is a very special day. It's a memorable day. It's one where we will celebrate the accomplishments of the men and women who stand on the field before you. These are not the same people that made their way to Fort Jackson some 10 weeks ago. They are different. They have grown in every respect of the word. They are our future, and without them, we have no army. Few will ever understand the transformation from civilian to soldier, and you have lived it, uh, to, you have to really have to live it to get at its essence. We're lucky today because our guest speaker has lived it his entire army career. With that, I would like to welcome our guest speaker, Major General Paul M. Beninati. Major, ben Major General Beninati is no stranger to the challenges and rigor of basic combat training. As we discussed earlier, he commanded a company here just a few years ago, sir. He's also served as a one unit station battalion operations officer, as initial entry training brigade commander, and now as the deputy chief of staff of the United States Army's Training and Doctrine Command. For over 30 years, Beninati has been a part of the transformation process that takes a volunteer and molds him into a disciplined soldier who is physically fit, lethal, and ready to defend the nation at a moment's notice. So, sir, there is no better person to help capture what today really means. Ladies and gentlemen, Major General Ben and I. Hey, y'all, to sum up what he just said, it's some old guy who was here a really long time ago. So, look, wow, good morning to y'all. Um, it's absolutely awesome to see so many people that are joining these exceptional soldiers as they mark this significant milestone of graduating from basic training. Thank you so very much for showing your support and, and to showing them how important of a day today really is. Parents, family, and uh, members and friends, what a great day it is for you and your families. Thank you for everything that you did from the day that they were born to get your soldier to this point. You set the base foundation through the lessons that you taught through your family values of patriotism, moral character, and selfless service that has provided your soldier with this incredible opportunity to pay back the fortune of living in this great land in the service of their nation in the Army of the United States. So hey, I gotta, I gotta ask though first, how was family day yesterday? Was that a, was that a fun time? Yeah. Yeah, it was really, I know it was great to see them after so long. You hear all the stories that they're telling you, but actually you get to see the transformation and all is kind of neat. Um, I would like to take a moment, though, before we begin, really to uh, recognize those who previously served in our nation's armed services. Would any veterans of the Army, the Marines, the Navy, Air Force, or Coast Guard please stand and be recognized? Ladies and gentlemen. are part of the 1% of the American citizens who served in our armed forces. We would not be here today in this great land with the rights and freedoms that we have had it not been with their service, their contribution, and their sacrifice. But parents, after, after seeing your soldier yesterday, I've got to ask, what do you think? How did the drill sergeants do with them during this 10-week time period? Yeah, there's, there's no doubt. I mean, I'm sure you saw the new confidence in their attitude. I, I saw you, I'm sure you saw that they walk a little taller than they did the last time you saw them. They're maybe just a little more courteous than you were, or than they were when you left them with us. And, and doesn't it seem as though they've matured a lot more than 10 weeks just during this very short period of time? And, and I gotta say, don't they look great in their uniforms? And, you know, You know, they, they've got sharp creases, their shoes are shined, and everything's in its place. Your soldiers have been taught confidence. They've been shown that they can accomplish just about anything. 
They accomplish things that they never thought were possible before they arrive, and now they know that they can accomplish anything that they set their minds to. The sky's the limit for your soldiers, and they're only limited by their will to serve, to learn, to work hard, and fully experience what life has to offer. I would also like to take a moment to thank the drill sergeants who are standing before you here today. Not just anyone can be a drill sergeant. It takes an NCO leader with special skills. It takes a leader with patience, one with technical skills that surpass everyone else's, one who's a subject matter expert in their field, has superior physical fitness, and one who has the passion to share this knowledge with these young people. These drill sergeants live their lives to an even higher standard than our average soldier. They are the best of the best. And while your soldier may tell you that the days here were very long during basic training, their drill sergeant started long before they did. And they were still at work after your soldiers went to bed. We owe a debt of gratitude to these fine men and women wearing the Smokey the Bear hat. And, and I want to say thank you, drill sergeants. Ladies and gentlemen, could we please have a round of applause for the drill sergeants who have led these basic training graduates? is very, very well deserved. While I know you'll always worry about your soldier when they can't be right there by your side, you have the comfort of knowing that they are highly trained and they don't just have a job, they have a career. While others are trying to figure out what to do with their lives, your soldier is part of an honorable profession, doing one of the most respected jobs in the world. They're making a decent living, they have a roof over their head, they're covered by medical, dental, life insurance plans, are earning money for retirement and money to further their education. They're a member of a very elite team. They're a part of history, and you should be proud that they had the courage to leave the comfort of their home and surroundings to experience the adventures all over the world that come with being a soldier. They've chosen to be something bigger than themselves. They will go on from here to their next training location where they'll learn a technical skill gain leadership experience, and learn to become a valued member of a team. All skills and knowledge that they're going to keep with them for the rest of their lives. And these are skills that are transferable from the military to the civilian world when that day comes. But you should be very proud of them for what they've chosen to do and for what they have and will become. To the soldiers graduating today, congratulations on successfully completing the first significant milestone along your journey with the Army. You will remember your drill sergeants what they taught you, how they treated you, encouraged you, and led you to find your deepest inner strength to get through things that you never thought were possible. And you will likely remember their names for the rest of your lives. For many of you, just a few months ago, you were still enrolled in either high school or college, probably wondering what the next step was. You probably had friends or relatives who looked at you like you were crazy when you told them that you had decided to join the Army. That's because they did not know any better. They did not understand what it takes to be a soldier. They did not understand that you are truly unique or that you are doing something that less than 1% of the people in our nation have done. And that is to wear the uniform of the armed services of our nation. And they did not understand the history, heritage, and the proud tradition of soldiers like you, who for the last 243 years have worn the uniform of the United States Army. This is unlike any other job in America. I mean, first of all, where else in America could you leave school with very little or no work experience and with nothing other than a will to learn, a will to serve, having the desire to be part of something greater than yourself, and a belief in yourself that you can accomplish anything that you set your mind to, where else in America can you show up and say, I am here, I am eager, I am strong, I am physically fit, I care about my health and fitness, I have a moral code and I always do what's right. And I always treat each other with dignity and respect. I'm a hard worker who does not accept defeat or give up and I want to learn to do one of 150 different jobs. 
Where else in America can you show up at someone's door, say those things, and be told, welcome to our team. We will train you and make you a part of our family, and you will be part of the Army team forever. You cannot go anywhere else in America other than right here in the Armed Forces of the United States, in the United States Army, the largest and the most powerful Army in the world. Congratulations on making a decision that you will never regret making. You've chosen a profession, a job, and maybe even a lifelong career where we will train you. We will teach you individual skills and also train you on how to be a leader. We will pay you an honest day's salary. We will ensure that you have adequate housing and food. We'll ensure that you have proper clothing and equipment. And we will pay for you and your direct family members to receive some of the finest health care available. All of this while you continue to earn money for college and advanced education, getting to see the world and see the different cultures and the people in it at no cost or you to you or your family. You know, I've served in the Army for almost 40 years now, and never one time have I heard someone say, I am really sorry that I joined the Army. But I cannot even begin to tell you the number of times that I have heard people say, my biggest regret in my life is that I did not stay in the Army. It was the best time of my life. Soldiers, you have earned the right to be part of one of the most elite teams in the world. And the opportunities that will be given to you now and the doors that will be open for you could never be found elsewhere. What you choose to do with this opportunity is entirely up to you. You are the next generation of guardians of our founding principles. Your lives will forever be changed in a positive way. We expect you to be calm when everyone else is panicked. We expect you to live the Army values every day, 24 hours each day. And even when you're in the civilian world, when a crisis happens, you're going to see that you instinctively will more than likely remain calm and move towards the situation when everyone else is running away from it. This is a great country, and you should be proud of our history and heritage and of what America stands for. We may not always agree on everything, but how we disagree matters. We're all fellow Americans on the same team and in the same family. And even when we disagree, we must be polite and treat everyone with dignity and respect. Soldiers, welcome to our Army. Welcome to our family. And congratulations on achieving this milestone of graduation. I am proud to serve in the United States Army with you, the most powerful and professional Army in the world. And I wish you the best of luck in all future endeavors. And thank you for what you are doing to protect our citizens and the rights and freedoms upon which our nation was founded.
Ladies and gentlemen, once the ceremony has concluded, family members of the awardees may meet their soldier at the tents located to the left of the bleachers. All other family members and friends may meet their soldier to the far right of the bleachers at the end of the parade field. We ask that you please remain seated and in the bleachers until all soldiers have passed the reviewing stand and the playing of the Army song is complete. was chosen to spearhead the amphibious assault on the island of Leyte for the 24th Division to liberate the Philippines in October 1944. The unit maintained constant contact with the enemy and was directly involved in a series of bloody battles for 75 continuous days. During the first five days and nights of hard fighting, troops of the 34th Infantry Regiment killed over 800 enemy in the effort to expand the beachheads and take control of the high ground commanding the entrance to the northern Leyte Valley. But it was on Calais Ridge that the heroic action of the regiment's 1st Battalion resulted in the awarding of their first presidential unit citation. On 10 November, the battalion of 565 men infiltrated and seized the 900-foot Calais Ridge, over three kilometers behind enemy lines. For 24 days, this group of men held the tactically important ridge against 10 major attacks and 17 other engagements often through heavy rain and mud, and on treacherous and steep terrain, dangerously close to the friendly mortar and artillery fire. Many of these engagements were fought hand to hand. Elements of the battalion were cut off four times, but counterattacked and regained contact with the rest of the unit. Within 17 days, the battalion was reduced to 390 men due to combat losses combined with sickness and jungle infections. On 2 December, the battalion finally cleared the heights overlooking the road and began turning over the area to fresh units of the 32nd Division. During the struggle, the 1st Battalion, 34th Infantry, lost 26 killed, 101 wounded, and 2 missing, but accounted for an estimated 900 enemy dead. For their arduous efforts against Kalei Ridge, the 1st Battalion received their first presidential unit citation. Ladies and gentlemen, you are reminded that as you are approached by the American flag, it is appropriate to rise and remain standing until it is passed to your right. Oh, 
position is the first surgeon, First Surgeon Daniel Burton from Dover, Arkansas. Bravo Company is commanded by Captain David Blanket from Las Vegas, Nevada. First person is led by Dresser Andrew Fields from Bakersfield, Nevada.
deliver to the four island leaders at the end of the parade field. We ask that you please remember to take all trash and personal items with you as you exit. Once again, thank you for your attendance. Enjoy the rest of your day and have a safe journey home. Victory.